hot enough for you? Sure as hell is in Florida. So today I'm going to show you how to make something cold inside when it's hot outside. I'm going to show you how to make a lemon sponge pie. And this is what you're going to need to do it. You're going to need a cup of sugar, quarter cup of butter, which is basically half a stick, two large eggs separated, four tablespoons of flour, a pinch of salt, a cup of milk, and the juice and grated rind of two lemons. Now on top of that you're going to need to create a homemade pie crust that I'm going to show you how to make picture perfect pie crust every time and all that takes is flour, cold Crisco, and ice cold water. So let's get started. We'll start by preheating our oven to 425 and you'll notice I'm using the convection oven instead of the big oven because again it's hot outside. So let me show you how to make some cool pie crust. All right, to make the pie crust, we're gonna start off with one and one thirds cup of flour. All purpose flour and not self-rising flour, guys. We're not making donuts here. To that, we are going to add one half a cup of ice cold vegetable shortening. You want to make sure you fill your half cupper all the way because you're going to need every bit of it. There we go. Alright, and you dump that in there into your flour. Get every last little bit. You can. There we go. Even if it means putting your fingers in the flour a little bit. Okay, then what you do, take a fork and you start cutting it in to the flour. What you ideally want this thing to look like before you're ready to go is you want it to look like crumb cake. So you just keep cutting it and stirring it, stirring it and cutting it. The trick is to get it down to really small little chunks because then there's only one other real process that's important to do in the bread crust and that's to add ice cold water and I mean ice cold. I usually keep water in the fridge just for this. Because the colder the water the better this will come out. Just about got it. Again, make sure you get off every last little bit. All right, now for the water. Now again, it depends on the time of year, the humidity, but this could take anywhere from four to six tablespoons of, of ice cold water. So what I normally do is I'm just gonna start off with a little cup of water and dip what I need as I need it. Let's put about, we'll start off with say three or four and we're going to get back to mix them with our fork. Say four. All right. And again, just stir it around because what you're trying to do now is to get this stuff to start to clump together and then eventually you're going to get your hands in there. So you don't want it to be real wet, but you don't also want it to be real dry. I'm going to go for two. I think we'll have about six. Like I said, it could take up to eight. It could take up to about eight. All right. See, now it's starting to come together. So now what you want to do is you want to take your flour, put some on your hands, and get in there. Dig in. The trick is just to make yourself a nice little ball of dough. And then once we get the ball of dough, I'll show you what to do with it next. Again, if you need to add another tablespoon, you know, you can do up to eight. But I use, again, at this point in time, I usually just do them one at a time. Because believe me, it doesn't take a lot. Again, you don't want to make speckle, you want to make crust. The trick to get fl flaky crust is to get your water right. And you can see, we're almost there. We may actually need the eighth one, but we'll see. Eh, maybe I'll do a half. I'm going to try to pick up 
a little bit of what's left down here in the bottom of the bowl. And that noise you hear in the background is the convection oven preheating. All right, there you go, and it's ready to go. And guess what? So are we. So let's go back over to the board. All right, for the next part of the procedure, you're gonna need two more things, wax paper and a rolling pin. I'll take about two feet of wax paper out. What we're gonna have is enough to be able to fold over the pie crust. We'll see what I mean in a minute. Yeah, about, that should do her. Then you take your ball of dough. Okay, now we're gonna roll the dough. So we take our sheet, and what I do if it's really hot is I put just a little bit of flour on the inside. And you'll find out in a minute why I'm doing that. Because when you get warm conditions, you know, even with air conditioning on and everything, sometimes the dough ball can tend to melt <laughs> and stick. So this will keep it from doing that. And you press that a little bit by hand. Just gonna sprinkle just a little bit on top again just to keep it from sticking to the paper. Then we just take it, we fold it over, make sure you give yourself enough room to work here, right? Then you take Mr. Rolling Pin here, and we're gonna try to roll out a nice picture perfect round pie crust. And it might take a little bit of time to do it, so what you want to be able to do is move it. See? And I kind of tend to roll it around the edges a bit. Get it started. Because you want this thing as thin as possible. I'm doing this just the way I do with the pizza dough, if you'll remember. We roll from the edges, and you see I'm making a nice round crescent on that side. Then we just turn it and pull it back. Because the trick is you got to get it to be bigger than this. Not quite yet. And you'll know when you're done because it pretty much fills up the inside of this puppy right here. All right. Here we go. We're almost there. Almost there. Almost there. Need to go a little further on this side. So there. All right. That should about do it. Put down our rolling pin, and now for the hard part. Trying to peel this back without peeling off all of the pie crust. And then what I do is I flip it onto the other side. There you go, voila. Right. Gonna give this little puppy just a little shot of non-stick. Okay, and then I'm gonna do just what I did there, but in reverse. Okay, here. Make sure it's not sticking. The trick is to try to hit it as close to the center as you can. Okay, and then the rest of it, just a little elbow grease, is what you want to do. Just press it out until you got some edges. You don't want it to be too thin on the bottom, but you also don't want it to be too thick. And you know, this is just part of cooking, guys. Okay. We'll let that come up. The side needs a little more. We help it out. There we go. Okay. Side has more than it needs, but we need a little more over here. We're almost there. All right. And then I just kind of take it. And if you got enough, you can actually what they call quenellate, which is you know fold it back and forth like this. But you know that's more show than anything else. I just want to make sure my pie crust comes all the way around to at least the lip. Because what's gonna happen when we get done here is guess what? We're gonna pour our pie in it. But the first thing you gotta do is you gotta blind bake it. Why? Because nobody likes soggy pie crust.
Again, this isn't rocket science, guys. It doesn't have to be Betty Crocker pretty, you know, it just has to taste good and not overflow when you pour your pour your pie when well, you pour your lemon sponge pie ingredients in there. So I'm just making sure I got enough to go all the way around. And I like it to just stick up just a little. See? That's another way to do it. It's called a fluted edge. Okay, and there's one more thing we're going to do before we pop this bad boy into the oven. And that's take Mr. Fork. And now you want to... I usually do it in two different directions. Why do we do that? Well, because we don't like to end up with having our pie cracking. Because if you get pockets of air underneath this thing, you're going to have a mess. So all the way around. Don't have to have a million of them, but enough. All right, and then the moment we've all been waiting for, we pop it in the oven. And what we're going to do is we want to cook it ideally 8 to 10 minutes, so I'm going to set it for 10. Okay, and while that's blind baking, what we can do is go over here back to Mr. Bowl, and then we'll put the rest of the mixture together right there and fill up our pie crust. So the next thing we're going to do while we're waiting for that is we're going to separate our eggs and get them nice and fluffy. You can use a, you can beat them by hand, but I've got a KitchenAid. I'm going to put it in there, and then we're going to assemble the rest of our pie filling in the bowl. So let's get over here and separate some eggs. Okay, the trick with separating eggs is to have two, count them, two bowls. So this way we've got both. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to crack the egg. And once you crack it, you separate it. The trick is not to break the yolk. You just toss this bad boy back and forth a few times until you get most of the egg whites into the mix, and then the yolk goes in the bowl. Do the same thing with this one. There we go, and that goes in the bowl. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put mine into the KitchenAid. Now just the whites, not the yolks, okay? Bad boy up. And start it whipping. While I was doing that, we'll go back over here. We can see our pie crust is still working its way. And we're going to do our the rest of our creation right over here once we get the crust out. Okay, so to get started, we're going to cream a quarter cup of, of butter, which is half one of these bad boys, and our sugar together. And cream translates to stir for the uninitiated. So let's start off with one, two, it's already a little softened because I've had it sitting out here since I started this recipe. Here you go, that's about half. Put the rest of it away. In the fridge. There you go. Our pie crust is done. So let's pull that out and see how that's looking. Pull back a little bit. Here's our crust. Beautiful. We'll just take the crust and we'll sit it over here on the side. So we're ready for it. Beautiful pie crust. Just leave it over here. We'll come back to this shortly. All right, let's make the filling. So, take our spoon, take Mr. Spoon, take the sugar, the sugar, pour it in the bowl. And what you want to do is get this to the point where it's just kind of like making a roux, but instead of using flour, you're using butter, so you want to combine it as best you can. And just keep on stirring. And then what I'm going to do once we get to the next portion is I'm going to switch to a whisk, and if you don't have a whisk, you can always use Mr. Fork. Okay, 
It takes a little bit of effort, but not too bad. When you're done, you shouldn't see too much of the individual sugar granules. And I'm using powdered sugar, but you can use regular sugars. Well, there we go. Okay, you can consider that creamed. So let me put the rest of the butter, the sugar butter, back in the bowl. Mm. All right. Then once the butter is in there, you want to add your milk, your flour, and your salt. So four tablespoons of flour. One, a two, a three, and again, it doesn't have to be precise. We're just this is just a thickening agent and four. Close enough. Okay, then I'm going to pour my lemon juice in. And this is fresh squeezed, so if you have fresh squeezed, you don't necessarily have to use the rind. If you don't, you want to use the rind. Okay. And then I'm going to take Mr. Whisk and we're going to get that to all combine. Again, if you don't have a whisk, use a fork. It all works. And now we're going to fold in our whites, which have been whipped up a bit. Try to get as much as you can out of the bowl. There we go. Okay, and this one you want to be a little gentle with, so I'm actually going to use the spatula. And it'll be a little lumpy. It doesn't have to be perfect. Now what you also want to do is you want to get the temperature okay so you want to make sure your oven again is preheated okay so what we're gonna do now is we're going to put the pie filling in the pie crust there you go and just pour it on in boys there you are beautiful isn't it then once I get my oven preheated back to 425, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop it in there and we are going to let that cook for 10 minutes at 425. You got this? Then you're going to reduce the heat to 325 and cook it for another 30 minutes. And then I will show you what we've got when that is done. So stand by. And there we have it. Now, I had to let mine cook about 45 minutes because of the um, convection oven, but as you can see, it's nice and brown. It's, it's actually risen quite a bit. Let's zoom in on it a little bit so you can really check it out. Isn't it a beautiful pie? Now what I'm going to do is take it out of the oven, let it sit on the cooling rack over here, and then pop it into the fridge for a couple hours, and we'll be good to go. Enjoy. Man Cave Munchies. See you next week.